Hello and welcome to Decision 2022. If I sound a bit stuffy, allergy it's allergy season down here in the south, and my allergies are fucking with me. But we are doing the May 2022 edition of the 2022 election night. It is now time for the 7 p.m. poll closings in the following states. And now we can make a projection out of the Indiana Senate race that Todd Young will go on to win re-election. Out of the Kentucky Senate race, Rand Paul will outperform polling by a lot and will win re-election, defeating Charles Booker. Out of South Carolina Senate race, Tim Scott will outperform Trump's numbers as, you know, outperformed, you know, expectations and will win re-election by a larger than expected margin. Out of Vermont Senate race, Peter Welch, the incumbent congressman out of Vermont at large, will replace retiring Senator Patrick Leahy to the Senate seat in Vermont. Out of Georgia's center race, it is currently too close to call. Raphael Warnock has a huge lead over Herschel Walker, big lead, uh, but these are all mail-ins and early votes coming out of the Atlanta area. And here's the current Senate composition, too close to call. This, it's tied right now, 32 seats apiece. Uh, Democrats only need 50 seats. Republicans need 51 to uh, gain power in the Senate. So we have a long night ahead of us. Out of South Carolina's governor race, Henry McMaster is the projected winner. He will go on to win re-election, defeating Joe Cunningham. Out of Vermont's governor race, Republican Phil Scott will keep this seat red for a blue state, red governor. He will win re-election by a larger margin than he did in 2020 by around 45 points. Out of Georgia's governor race, too close to call similar numbers uh, to the Georgia Senate race. Stacey Abrams leading Brian Kemp by a lot, over 29 points. And here's the current governor composition. We have 10 seats for the Republicans and 6 seats for the Democrats. Uh, you need 26 for a majority. It is now 7.30 p.m. and the following states have poll closings. Out of North Carolina Senate race, too close to cut, call. Cherry Beasley currently has a large lead over Republican Congressman Ted Budd. Again, these are early votes coming out of the Raleigh and Charlotte areas. Out of Ohio's Senate race, currently too close to call. Tim Ryan has a 19-point lead over J.D. Vance. Uh, again, mail-in votes are being counted first. Out of Georgia's Senate race, currently too close to call. The lead has dropped as we are now getting Election Day votes, as Raphael Warnock has a 6-point lead over athlete Herschel Walker. And here's this current Senate composition, still tied 32 seats apiece. And out of the Ohio governor race, Mike DeWine will win by 20 points, defeating Nan Whaley for re-election. Out of Georgia's governor race, currently too close to call. Similar numbers as the uh, Senate race, Stacey Abrams leading Brian Kemp by around 6 points. Current Senate composition, Republicans have 11 seats and the Democrats 6 seats. It is now 8 p.m. poll closings and the following states have poll closings. At the Alabama Senate race, after Donald Trump unendorsed Mo Brooks, Mo Brooks started campaigning his ass off and narrowly won the runoff against Katie Britt. Uh, Donald Trump then re-endorsed him, saying some nonsense like it was a ruse or something, I don't know. But Mo Brooks will be elected to the Senate out of Alabama. Out of Florida Senate race, Marco Rubio will outperform all expectations and win by around 12 points in the Florida Senate race. Out of the Missouri Senate race, after Donald Trump endorsed him, a month before the primary, Billy Long is projected to win the Missouri Senate race, succeeding Roy Blunt. Out of, out of one of Oklahoma's Senate race, Jackson LeMayer, after he went to a runoff with James Langford, Donald Trump endorsed him, which helped him a lot in the runoff, which helped him defeat Langford. And now Jackson LeMayer will be elected to his first term in the Senate, as well as Mark Wayne Mullen. This was a race Donald Trump did not endorse in, despite someone who worked with Trump being in the race, Scott Pruitt, but Mark Wayne Mullen ended up winning the runoff against uh, T.W. Shannon very narrowly, and he will be elected to his first term to the Senate. Out of Connecticut Senate race, Richard Blumenthal will go on to win another term to the Senate very handedly, defeating Temis Clarides by 12 points. Out of Illinois Senate race, Tammy Duckworth will break even with Joe Biden's 2020 numbers, winning by around 17 points in the state. Out of Maryland Senate race, Chris Van Hollen will defeat a no-name Republican by around 28 points. At New Hampshire Center, it's too close to call. As you can see here, Maggie Hassan leading by 15 points over her opponent, Chuck Morse. A race that is uh, supposed to be competitive, but most places have this as likely to lean D. And out of Pennsylvania Center, it's too close to call. John, or excuse me, Mehmet Oz is leading John Fetterman by a lot as uh, our election day votes are being counted first. Out of Georgia Center, race, we can now make a call a big win for Republicans. Herschel Walker will be able to defeat Raphael Warnock, winning by around three percentage points evading the runoff which you know was possible 
uh, due to the third party vote. But of course, Hersh Walker is going to be winning by enough to evade the runoff and win straight out. At a North Carolina Senate race, another call. Ted Budd will win this race by around seven points, defeating Cherry Beasley to the chagrin of many Democrats across the nation. Out of Ohio Senate race, J.D. Vance, of course, he will almost break even with Trump, almost a double-digit victory. He'll win by around nine points, defeating Tim Ryan. And now here's the Senate composition so far. It is once again tied 40 seats apiece. Democrats need 10 seats. Republicans need 11 seats. Uh, anything, it's still anyone's race here tonight. Out of Alabama's governor race, Kay Ivey will go on to win another term as governor, winning by around 32 percentage points. Out of Florida's governor race, Ron DeSantis will shock everyone, winning by around 15 points, outperforming Marco Rubio. Despite all the critics, DeSantis will win by a large margin. Out of New Hampshire's governor race, Chris Sununu will win by around 40 points to win re-election. Out of Oklahoma's governor race, Kevin Stitt will actually underperform Trump, winning by around 26 percentage points against Joy Hoffmeister. Out of Tennessee's governor race, Bill Lee, one of the most popular governors in the country, will win by around 28 points. Out of Illinois' governor race, J.B. Pritzker will win re-election by 11 points, close to competitive, but Richard Irvin couldn't get the job done. Out of Maryland's governor race, this is a gain. The former DNC chair and former labor secretary under Barack Obama, Tom Perez, will flip the seat blue. One of the first, the first governor's gain goes to Democrats. Can you believe that? He will win by around 28 points. Out of Massachusetts' governor race, another gain for the Democrats on the governor level. Uh, incumbent Massachusetts uh, Attorney General Maura Healey will go on to win her first term as governor, winning by around 22 points. As Jeff Deal does really well with ancestral Republicans, he will outperform, you know, the generic ballot. And out of Rhode Island's governor race, Dan McKee, the progressive, will go on to win re-election by around 14 points. And out of Connecticut's governor race, currently too close to call, Ned Lamont has a 40-point lead as of right now, as mail-ins are being counted first. Uh, we expect this, to, this number to... Uh, decrease greatly as the night goes on. Out of Maine's governor race, too close to call. Janet Mills has a 14-point lead over Paula Page currently. And out of Pennsylvania's governor race, Doug Mastriano, uh, the very controversial candidate. The RNC is putting a little funding into this race, uh, to much chagrin of Donald Trump, who is pissed about it. Uh, he is having he is leading by a large margin over Josh Shapiro. Out of Georgia's governor race, uh, Brian Kemp will go on to defeat Stacey Abrams by four points. This is actually not performance of Herschel Walker, barely, but still a non-performance nonetheless. Out of, and currently, the governor composition is Republicans have 17 seats to the Democrats' 10 seats. Uh, it's currently still too close to call uh, who wins the governor's association. It's now 8.30 p.m. and Arkansas has their poll closings. And we can project that John Boozman, after going through a competitive primary, he will go on to win re-election to the Senate. At a New Hampshire Senate race, still too close to call. Maggie Hassan now has a nine-point lead over Chuck Morse. Out of Pennsylvania Senate race, too close to call. The gap has narrowed greatly as Mehmet Oz has a ten-point lead over John Fetterman. And here's the current Senate composition. Republicans now leading 41 seats to 40. Out of Arkansas's governor race, Sarah Huckabee Sanders will go on to win her first term as governor by around 30 points as Ricky Harrington Jr. and Chris Jones were splitting the liberal vote, even though Ricky Harrington's a libertarian. it I don't question it either. And out of Connecticut's governor race, Ned Lamont will outperform his 2018 numbers as he wins by around six points over Bob Stefanowski. Uh, Republicans put a lot of money into this race, but they couldn't get it done. Uh, Lamont was just too popular moderate populists are crying everywhere including myself Adam Maine's governor race is currently too close to call uh, Janet Mills has a five point lead over Paula Page currently this race is starting to get narrower and narrower uh, most pundits have this race as likely Democrat out of Pennsylvania's governor race too close to call it is tightened yet again uh, Doug Mastrano is seriously underperforming Dr. Oz here he only has a one point lead over Josh Shapiro right now these are terrible numbers for the Mastriano campaign and here's the current governor composition right now. Republicans have 18 seats to Democrats, 11 seats. It's now 9 p.m. and the following states have poll closings. Out of Colorado's Senate race, uh, this was a seat that once could have been competitive, but of course, we couldn't get a good campaign. Eli Bremer was the best hope besides Cory Gardner, but, you know, he fucked up his uh, signatures. And Michael Bennett will go on to win re-election by around 13 points. Out of New York Senate race, Chuck Schumer will go on to outperform Biden's 2020 numbers and win by around 23 points in the state. 
out of Kansas Center Race, Jerry Morin will go on to win re-election by around 22 points. At Louisiana Center Race, John Kennedy will win by a large margin as he was the one of the the only big name Republican running against multiple big name Democrats, be, breaking the 50% threshold, not going to a runoff. At North Dakota Center Race, John Hoven will go on to win re-election to another term. At a South Dakota Center Race, uh, Bruce Whalen, a Native American, uh, ran against John Thune. Uh, a poll recently came out with him at 10% and John Thune at 46% and Mark Mowry at like 8%. Donald Trump decided to endorse Bruce Whalen over John Thune and then, you know, Bruce Whalen eventually narrowly defeated John Thune by around three points in this primary, uh, becoming the first Native American senator in a long time, unless you count Elizabeth Warren, I guess, or whoever I'm forgetting, which I'm sure I'm forgetting someone. Out of Arizona, center race, currently too close to call. Mark Kelly currently leading Blake Masters by around 20 points. Again, mail-in votes are coming in first out of uh, Maricopa County. Out of Wisconsin, center race, too close to call. Medela Barnes currently leading Ron Johnson by around 8 points. Out of New Hampshire, center race, too close to call. Maggie Hassan leading by around 5 points over Chuck Morse. Pennsylvania, center race, too close to call. G Mehmet Oz currently leading by around 4 points over John Fetterman. Uh, that gap is closing in more and more. And here's the current Senate composition. Republicans have 45 Senate seats to Democrats, 42 seats. Out of Colorado's governor race, Jared Polis will go on to win re-election by around 15 points. Kind of breaks even with Joe Biden's numbers. Out of New York's governor race, Kathy Hochul will go on to win re-election by 10 points. A very close race, underperforming Biden's numbers by 7 points in the state. And Nebraska's governor race, Jim Pillen, the businessman, will go on to win his first term as governor. At a South Dakota's governor race, Christy Noem, despite the far right wanting to primary here, as well as the moderate populists, uh, she won another term, and now she could be on Donald Trump's shortlist to become VP. We'll just have to wait and find out. At Texas governor race, uh, that says Christy Noem, that's a mistake. Greg Abbott will go on to win another term, I think his third term as the governor of Texas by beating Beto O'Rourke by around 15 points. Out of Wyoming's governor race, Mark Gorin will go on to win by a landslide, defeating his Democrat opponent by 50 points, a, one of the more popular governors in the state. Out of Arizona's governor race, kind of uh, even with the uh, Senate race, uh, Katie Hobbs leading Kerry Lake by uh, 20 points. Out of Kansas' governor race, too close to call, uh, Laura Kelly leading Derek Schmidt by 10 points. Out of Michigan's governor race, too close to call. Gretchen Whitmer having a huge lead over James Craig currently. Out of Minnesota's governor race, too close to call. Tim Walls, large lead over Scott Jensen. Out of New Mexico's governor race, too close to call. The controversial, scandalous sexual assaulter, Michelle Lujan Grisham, has a 17-point lead over the uh, astrolog or meteorologist, that's the correct term, the weatherman, Mark Ronchetti. Out of Wisconsin's governor race, Kevin Nicholson, who barely won the primary over Rebecca Cleefish and Tim Mickles when Trump endorsed him, is uh, currently trailing Tony Evers by around eight points, similar to the Senate race. And we can now make a call in a Maine's governor race as Janet Mills will go on to win another term as governor, barely breaking the 50% threshold. Uh, Paula Page won 47% of the vote. She won 50% of the vote, so she barely avoided ranked choice voting. Out of Pennsylvania's governor race, this is what happens when Republicans nominate a terrible candidate. Uh, the or national, the Republican Governors Association, the RNC put no, put little funding into this race, and Josh Shapiro ended up beating Doug Mastriano by three to four points, which is still impressive, despite because you know Mastriano had little funding, only grassroots funding, not RNC funding, and Shapiro still couldn't win by a larger margin than this. This is your 2014 Michigan Senate race moment, I would presume. And here is the governor composition so far. Republicans at 22 seats need four seats to win a majority, and Democrats are at 15 seats. It's now 10 p.m., and four states have poll closings. Out of Iowa Senate race, Chuck Grassley will go on to win by 30 points yet again, only losing Johnson County or Polk County. I can't remember the name. Out of Utah Senate race, Mike Lee will go on to defeat Evan McMullen to win another term as a senator. And Nevada Center race currently too close to call. Adam Laxalt currently leads his opponent by 15 points as Election Day votes are coming in. Out of New Hampshire Center race, too close to call. Uh, Maggie Hassan has a three-point lead over Chuck Morse. Her lead is narrowing more and more. 
out of Pennsylvania's uh, Senate race. Mehmet Oz currently has an eight point or nine point lead, no, seven point lead, excuse me, over John Fetterman. I can't do math. Out of Arizona Senate race, too close to call. The lead is starting to narrow for Mark Kelly as he's currently leading Blake Masters by around 13 points. At Wisconsin Senate race, too close to call. A statistical tie between the two candidates. Mandela Bars leading just by around 10,000 votes currently. And here's the current Senate composition right now. Republicans at 47 seats to Democrats 42 seats. Out of Iowa's governor race, Kim Reynolds will go on to win by around 16 points. This is mostly uh, due to Chuck Grassley helping her on the ticket. At a Nevada's governor race, too close to call. It's Joe Lombardo leading Steve Sislak by roughly the same margin Lack Salt was leading Mosto. Out of the Kansas governor race, we can now make a projection that Republicans will make a, their, I think their first flip on the governor's level tonight as Derek Schmidt, the Attorney General of Kansas, will go on to become governor, defeating incumbent Laura Kelly to flip this seat red. Out of Minnesota's governor race, Tim Walls will go on to win re-election by five points, uh, defeating Scott Jensen. There were some worries that the marijuana party could you know, cost to Walls the election, but it doesn't seem that will be happening tonight. Out of Arizona's governor race, too close to call. Katie Hobbs now has a 13-point lead over Carrie Lake. Out of Michigan's governor race, too close to call. Gretchen Whitmer has an 18-point lead over James Craig. Out of New Mexico's governor race, too close to call. Uh, Michelle Lujan Grisham currently has a 5-point lead over Mark Ronchetti. Wisconsin's governor race, too close to call. A statistical tie between the two candidates. Here's the current governor's composition so far. Republicans only needing two more seats to win a majority in the National Governors Association. They currently have 24 seats to Democrats, 16. It is now 11 p.m. and the following states have poll closings. And out of California's uh, Senate race, uh, Alex Padilla, who once had a strong challenger in Jerome Wharton after he dropped out. Alex Padilla had no major challenger, and he will go on to win re his first full term to the Senate. And in the Hawaii Senate race, Brian Schatz will go on to win re-election to, to another term. Out of Oregon Senate race, Ron Wine will break even with Joe Biden's 2020 numbers and win re-election. Patty Murray will go on to win re-election by around 11 points, defeating Tiffany Smiley. Out of Idaho Senate race, Mike Crapo will go on to win another term to the Senate. Out of Wisconsin Senate race, uh, Ron Johnson will go on to win re-election to another term, defeating Mandela Barnes by around 4 percentage points. And at Nevada Center race, too close to call. A statistical tie between the two candidates. Laxalt has a 4,000 vote lead currently. At New Hampshire Center race, too close to call. A one point lead for Maggie Hassan. A 6,000 vote lead over Chuck Morse. Pennsylvania Center race, too close to call. A statistical tie right now. Uh, Fetterman, only 29,000 votes behind Mehmet Oz. Out of Arizona Center race, too close to call. Mark Kelly has a five point lead over Blake Masters as of right now. And here's the current Senate composition so far. Republicans at 49 seats to Democrats, 46 seats. Republicans need to win two more seats to win a majority. That's all they need. Republic Democrats just need four. Uh, many Republicans are shocked as it is. This is as close as it is. But some are saying, you know, it's still plenty of time. So we'll just have to wait and find out. But out of California's governor race, Gavin Newsom, the controversial Democrat, will win another term as governor. Out of Hawaii's governor race, Congressman Kai Cahill will go on to win his first term as governor, defeating B.J. Penn by around 18 points. A very close for her Hawaii race. Out of Idaho's governor race, Brad Little will go on to win re-election by 32 points. Out of Oregon's governor race, too close to call. Sorry about that. Out of Oregon's governor race, uh, currently too close to call. There is a strong third-party challenger in uh, Betsy Johnson. Who is taking votes away from both candidates? Uh, Tina Kotek currently leading Christine Drazen by around eight percentage points. And New Mexico's governor race, uh, we can now make a big projection for the Republicans. Mark Cronchetti will go on to win another term as the governor of, well, or excuse me, not another term, but as his first term, uh, defeating Michelle Lujan Grisham by around three points. A big win for Republicans here tonight. And we can now make a projection that the majority, the governor majority, will go to the Republicans. They will uh, keep their majority currently. Let's see if they can make gains to not. And we can now make a big projection. Speaking of gains, Wisconsin will flip red. Kevin Nicholson will defeat Tony Evers by around four points over performance of the polls. 
And Nevada's governor race too close to call. Statistical tie. Joe Lombardo has a 4,000 vote lead over Steve Sislak. Arizona's a governor race too close to call. Katie Hobbs currently leading by around five points over Carrie Lake. And a Michigan's governor race too close to call. Richard Wimmer has a nine point lead over James Craig. Roughly two, uh, 285,000 votes separate the two candidates, roughly. And here's the current governor composition. Republicans have 27 seats to Democrats, 18 seats. It is now 1 a.m. We can now make a call, some calls out of Alaska. And here is the current Senate map. Of course, they do ranked choice voting. Kelly Teshapaka currently leads her opponents at 43%. Lisa Murkowski at 35%. Independent John Ho at 15%. And the Democrat at 7%. And here is the current Senate composition. No change here. 46 to 49 out of the Alaska governor race, Mike Dunleavy, the incumbent governor, in the lead at 45%. Former governor, independent Bill Walker at 27%. Uh, Democrat, Les Gara at 21%. And Republican, Christopher Kirka at 8%. We can now make a call of the Oregon's governor race. Tina Kotek, despite Republicans putting a lot of money in this race, she will keep this race blue. Uh, seems like Oregon voters are a bit elastic, as you can say. And here's the current governor composition so far. Republicans at 27 seats, Democrats at 19 seats. It is now 1.30 a.m. We can now make a call out of Nevada as in their center race and governor race. As Catherine Cortez Masso will shockingly win re-election to her seat in Nevada. It was very close. Uh, Adam Laxalt once again fails, but this time in a red wave year. And Steve Sislak will also win re-election uh, very, very narrowly as of right now. It's now 2 a.m., and we can now make updates out of Alaska as uh, we can now tell you Kelly Tishabaka now at 44%, Lisa Murkowski at 37%, and John Ho at 19% as most of the Democrats' votes went to John Ho uh, over the other two candidates. But Tishabaka still has a lead right now. Now the governor's race, uh, Mike Dunleavy almost at 50%. He's at 49%. Bill Walker's at 29% and Les Gara at 22%. Chris, most of Christopher Kirk's votes went to Mike Dunleavy. It's now 2.30 a.m. We can now make a call out of New Hampshire. Big surprise here. Chuck Morse will go on to win, defeat Maggie Assad very narrowly in a red wave year. Uh, despite Nevada not flipping, New Hampshire did. Very shocking right now. You would expect Nevada to go before New Hampshire, but hey, anything's possible. New Hampshire... Chuck Morse wins his first term, defeating Maggie Hassan. It's now 3 a.m. We can now make updates out of Alaska. And Lisa Murkowski will go on to win re-election, defeating Kelly Tishabaka by around four points. Uh, 52 to 48, very close uh, election. But Lisa Murkowski will go on to win re-election. Same thing, but hold on. And we can now project that Republicans will win the majority in the Senate. They will make gains enough to win the majority outright. 51 seats to 49 seats. Republicans will win the majority. And out of Alaska's governor race, Mike Dunleavy will go on to win another term, uh, actually by a much larger margin than Mikarski versus Tishibaka, but he will defeat Bill Walker in the final round. It's now 3.30 a.m. We can now make calls out of Pennsylvania. A gain for Democrats. Another shocker at New Hampshire flipped, you would think. Anyway, but John Fetterman will shock the world, defeating Mehmet Oz. The Republican Party was too fractured. Doug Mastriano brought Mehmet Oz down. John Fetterman will defeat Mehmet Oz, flipping Pennsylvania blue. It's now 4 a.m. We can now make calls out of Arizona's both races. Mark Kelly will go on to win re-election to a full term, defeating uh, Blake Masters. Uh, Masters couldn't appeal to uh, Maricopa County suburbs like Mark Kelly could. And we can now end Katie Hobbs' fight all our controversy. She will flip Arizona's governor race blue, defeating Carrie Lake. Uh, all the attacks stuck. Carrie Lake couldn't defend herself as well as some might have hoped. And Mark Kelly has helped Katie Hobbs through the finish line very narrowly. It is now 4.30 a.m. And we can now make our final call out of Michigan. Uh, Gretchen Whitmer will win re-election very, very narrowly. This has gone to recounts. But Gretchen Whitmer is being projected the winner out of this race. And here is the final Senate comp composition. Republicans making a net gain of 151 seats to 49 seats. Uh, not a bad night for Democrats. Not a bad night despite it being an R plus 6 environment right, as of right now. And out of the final governor composition, Republicans will win 28 seats to Democrats 23. 
No gains were made for the Republicans, shockingly, none at all. As Democrats flipped three seats, Republicans flipped three seats. Democrats won Arizona, Massachusetts, and Maryland. Republicans were given Wisconsin, Kansas, and New Mexico. And we can now make a projection out of the House majority, a gain for the Republican Party. Uh, Kevin McCarthy will be the next Speaker of the House, unless Donald Trump says otherwise. Uh, and they will make a huge gain of 52 seats. They have 265 seats to Democrats, 170 seats. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you heard me like sniff real hard, I'm sorry, allergies. Uh, but thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to go follow my Twitter at Chaotic Politics. This is the Chaotic One saying peace.